In today's video, we're going to talk about examples of confirmation bias so you can spot it and stop it from keeping your life and business from the purpose you want to fulfill. So firstly, let's quickly talk about what confirmation bias is. Put simply, confirmation bias is when we use evidence we've just discovered to back up our existing beliefs without thinking about alternative interpretations or explanations for this evidence. In this first example, I'm going to explain how seeing a blue car leads Jane to confirm her belief that she can change reality with her thoughts. Let's say that Jane here believes that what she thinks inside her head changes what happens in the real world around her. This is commonly referred to as magical thinking. One day, Jane is walking down the street on her morning stroll and she decides to test this theory out. She says, I'm going to think of a blue car and see whether it appears. She waits a minute or two as she's going along her walk and next thing you know, would you believe it, she sees a blue car. Confirmation bias would be using this new piece of evidence, the blue car, to confirm her existing belief that what she thinks inside her head changes what happens in the real world. But for us, looking at Jane's quote-unquote experiment, we can see that there are some problems with Jane using this evidence to back up her claim. Firstly, we think, well, it's pretty common to see a blue car when you're out on a walk. And it seems likely that whether Jane thought about a blue car or not, she would have come across a blue car on her stroll. Would this have happened if she picked a horse or a UFO to test out instead? Secondly, we also think about where Jane is paying attention. Unlike most other mornings where she's thinking about the fastest way to get her first cappuccino for the day, today her brain is on high alert to scan the environment for a blue car. Even if she forgets for a moment that she's looking for a blue car, her subconscious brain is primed to keep an eye out for a blue car and will make sure she consciously becomes aware of the blue car when she sees it. Thirdly, this is a street that Jane has walked down many times before. Without her knowing it, she may have come across a blue car driven by one of the locals on many previous occasions. She didn't consciously know it because she was thinking about the coffee. So can we really count seeing the blue car as evidence of Jane's magical power to manifest change in her physical environment with her mind? We all fall into the trap of making assumptions due to confirmation bias along with a whole heap of other cognitive biases. Why? Because our brain is kind of like a fussy, lazy pattern recognition machine. Its default mode is what Daniel Kahneman refers to as type one thinking, and it is what we generally use to navigate the world around us and make quick decisions that will get us out of a pinch and potentially save our lives. These decisions are made based on biases that have been created from the information available to our individual brain to identify patterns it has learned over the course of our lifetime. Our brain requires a lot more energy to make decisions using what Daniel Kahneman refers to as type two thinking. This is slow, deliberate thinking where we are a lot better at spotting biases and assumptions that can be leading our business or our life down a track we don't wanna go. Many people describe feeling stuck as a result of relying too much on their default type one thinking. So why would this be the case? Let's think about confirmation bias again, and this time I'm going to use a business example. Let's say that Sandra feels like no matter what she does, her new business just won't grow. At the moment, she believes that the next problem in a series of problems she has to solve is that her website needs to improve before her business will be able to make its next sale. Every day for a week, she looks at her sales numbers and sees that she hasn't made a new sale. This new sales data from the last week is her evidence that she needs to improve her website. Now, whilst it may be the case that Sandra needs to improve the way her website looks, let's think about some of the other questions we'd want to be asking her to make sure that she's not falling into the trap of confirmation bias, which is making her feel stuck. Firstly, we know that Sandra has made sales before, so we should be asking Sandra to have a look at where those sales came from and how they happened. Secondly, we'd want to know, did Sandra's belief that she wasn't going to make a sale impact other business activities she had been doing? Maybe her belief has meant she hasn't been trying to make a sale because she believes it won't happen anyway. This is called a self-fulfilling prophecy, another cognitive bias also known as the behavioral confirmation effect, which is when a person's expectations influence their behavior 
to bring about the expected result, in this case, the lack of new sales. Thirdly, we'd want to look at whether there are other problems that relate to the website. Maybe the website itself is great. Maybe the problem is getting traffic to the website. Confirmation bias can have a significant impact on how we view the world and the way we go about identifying and solving problems in business and in life. So where have you spotted confirmation bias before? Share your favorite examples in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on decision making, brain science, entrepreneurship and more on my channel.